twins taking advantage of the draft lottery. They're picking fifth. Okay, yep. Yes, 100%. Okay, appreciate you. Okay, so a couple goals for the week here. We're going to try Ezra's desires to rank 200. 200. Which will require a little bit of seat pace, if we yeah. can. So we're going to spend a lot of time, obviously, up here in this front row. This first day, we'll, for the new folks in here, this will take a little bit. It's going to feel like we're going to get to about 40 players by the draft. But things will pick up as we get down the board. Well, we normally get in roughly a week prior to the draft and uh, kind of get settled in. We, we look at the board, which is kind of already set up. Yeah, so we mainly have our supervisors and, and higher up. Uh, we'll bring a few of our area scouts in um, just for the experience. Whenever we hire a new scout, we're, we bring them in the first year so they can get a better feel for how the draft's gonna unfold, the things that go into it. And we start ranking, presenting players, um, probably after the first couple we'll vote on. And that's kind of how we start the day and start the process. We have 12 reports in the rig. Dawson is the area scout and Q is the supervisor. Uh, he can run. He moves well. I saw him make some really nice plays in center field this year. This guy reminds me of Larry Walker. I think he's got the highest ceiling of anybody on this board. I know we all get shy about comparing it to Joe Maurer's swing, but it's got some of those elements to it. The and Max part of that. That's where Cliffy dropped the eight on this guy. That's how good he was. I haven't found anybody that said anything bad about this kid. It's almost scary how squeaky good it is. I saw Ryan Jeffers yesterday. He talked about his training. We trained together. He said he moves great. When you walk into the room that night, there's always a little bit more tension in the air and it's just because everyone's not sure how it's going to play out but it's about to play out really soon. Okay. Let's do it. Feeling good? Feeling great. When we put together how we wanted the you know the shot to be when they cut into our room during draft night you know, we wanted to really pay respect to Mike as best we could. Let's go. Let's zoom take us inside the draft room of the Minnesota Twins. Now, you notice they're all wearing white visors. That's in honor of longtime Super Scout Mike Radcliffe. Uh, he wore that all the time. He was a scout for them for over 30 years. He passed away at the age of 66 in that entire front office honoring the great Mike Radcliffe. Sweet. Here you go, Mike. And part of that was having his... Uh, his jersey there, and also the visors. It was rare that he wasn't at a game without a visor on, and he had a certain look to him, and a visor was one of the mainstays. On behalf of Major League Baseball, welcome to the 2023 draft. I don't know if my phone doesn't work or what. I'm getting nothing right now. It's just a little bizarre. Hello. <laughs> The three of us have not gotten a single text. That's yep. odd. All right, now we, it sounds like we're confirmed on Mike for Bit Texas. The Minnesota Twins have the next thing. Still good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Tim? Yes, sir. You have your sound on. Okay, your sound on. Okay. Jenkins. Yep. The Minnesota Twins select draft ID 5635. Walker Jenkins, an outfielder from South Brunswick High School. With the fifth pick of the 2023 MLB Draft, the Minnesota Twins select Walker Jenkins, an outfielder from South Brunswick High School in Southport, North Carolina. Last three teams you just picked got number one pick caliber talents because of the lottery. If they don't win the lottery, they aren't getting these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's huge. And I think for Walker especially, it might be the best hit power combination in the high school class. I think that's really what separates him. When it, it was our, finally our turn to pick and Walker Jenkins was there, we were ecstatic. It's unreal. It's, it's only a feeling like you can describe if, if it's happened to you. It's a surreal type of feeling where you're just, it's almost like it's not even real. He got to us at pick five in the draft. We couldn't have been more happy to select a kid with that kind of talent, that kind of upside, but ultimately 
that kind of character that fits who, who we want a Twins player to be. How we doing? I'm good. I'm good. Okay, I'll circle back. Thank you. Okay, I'll circle back. Thanks. It's going right to script. <laughs> The Minnesota Twins have the next pick. Soto. The 34th pick of the 2023 MLB Draft, the Minnesota Twins select Charlie Soto. A right-handed pitcher from Reborn Christian Academy, Kissimmee, Florida. Good job, Freddie. Way to go. Good job, Freddie. To get... Charlie Soto, where we got him, was a, was a pitcher that we were hoping would make it to that range, and and uh, it worked out. Charlie, congratulations. You look good in the uni, by the way. I look so good in the pitch. <laughs> you do. What was that moment like for you and your family? It was emotional, you know, hearing my name called, you know, in the 34th pick to the Twins. I mean, I balled down. My mom, she was crying. My dad was crying. We're all crying, but it was just a surreal feeling, and I'm ready to get to work. He's a younger player, but, you know, obviously he's got a mature body that's still going to get even better as time goes on. It was, it was exciting. Uh, I think I started talking to the Twins, I believe it was last summer, during the summer circuit. I didn't, I didn't expect you know, the Twins to take me. Um, I'm glad they did, though, because you know, it's, it's a great organization. He checked every box there, and, and you know, we got to know him a lot away from the field. Uh, he came to a workout in Fort Myers. Uh, we met with him at the Combine. Just a, a great kid with a ton of upside and um, really good pitches. I know that I'm a hard worker. I'm dedicated. I'm gonna do whatever in my power, you know, to bring a, a World Series back to the city. Walker Jenkins. I met him last summer. You know, he's he's a great dude. Very humble. I do everything I can to help this organization win. Um, to be a, a, a leader and to be a role model for the the people that come out here and watch. And I'm gonna give him my all each and every game. All right, thanks uh, for everyone for being here today. Uh, as Dustin just said, this is a tremendous day for the Minnesota Twins organization. I want to make a point here. On, on August 30th last year, 2022, a longtime scouting director and scouting legend for the Minnesota Twins, Mike Radcliffe, wrote an entry in our system uh, that talked about being off the charts in every one of those categories. And, and Walker, you unfortunately will never get a chance to meet Mike. Mike passed away between the time he wrote that and this draft but he put the highest number you can put on a player uh, on a follow list into the fall uh, of, of anybody. And this is a guy who's responsible for the likes of Joe Maurer, Torrey Hunter, numerous uh, Minnesota Twins players over the course of a lot of years. And, and Mike's fingerprints are all over all of our drafts, but certainly even after his passing this year is all over this one because of how he looked at you. And I think that that is a very unique thing for this organization, it means a lot to us and everyone a part of the organization. I just love the game. You know, I can't even say that there's a particular thing that I love most. I love being out in the field and playing. That's, that's my favorite part about it. Um, I just feel like I'm a very motivated kid in general. Uh, I want to be the best at anything and everything that I do. And that's obviously the, the main motivation along with winning. And when you get to the completion, it's a little bit of a exhale. You're there. Then you got to sign them all, and that's part of the process next. Now that we're fully done today and getting done with signing everybody, uh, now you focus on their development, which is the best part.